Hi there. How you doing? Uh, Lee Ramang here from Delkim. Um, welcome along to my little Facebook Live, keeping every think uh, well, keep myself sane, I think. Um, so if you just join us, um, a few to, uh, before we uh, get going, I'm going to cover a few things today. So um, main thing we're going to cover is vibration sensing and how to get the most out of your alarms. Okay, so it's the key for using Delkims. Okay, so hello if you just join. Um, just waiting for a few people to get themselves here before we we crack on. Um, just to uh, let you know if you haven't done so already. Download. Okay, the app is there and it's a competition there as well to get entry uh, into a free draw to win. A great price, seven hundred and eighty pounds with the stuff. Okay, set of alarms with hangers, um, box with accessories. Okay, so that's a, a complete blue set. Uh, could be yours if you download our app and, and register. So why not? You got nothing to lose, and it's a really useful app. Okay, uh, getting good feedback. Everybody using it and find it really useful. It's got all quick guides onto the new product. It's got short. Uh, all the videos you can access returns spares you can do your warranty on there as well so um, it's worth having okay so hi guys if you just join us I'm um, just uh, waiting for everybody to come on board before we really get going and um, just letting everybody know uh, about the app so um, hi to Alan Smith Dale Smith Dean Marsh hi there Dean Stuart been hi you've been some regulars so anyway Shall we uh, we crack on? I'll give it my best shot. Hopefully these are of some use. They're always going to be on our Facebook pages, so um, we'll see how we get on. Um, so, the main thing about Delkims is vibration. Okay, so that's what sets Delkims apart from any other bite alarm on the market. Um, all other bite alarms work on a wheel or variation thereof. Um, and what's Delkim different is its vibration sensor. So, okay, if I can just show you, oh, can you see in there? Let's just turn that in there. That little, well, not focusing very well, but see a little Y piece? Let's bring that back a bit. There's a little Y piece in there. Okay, so no moving parts whatsoever in a Delkim, apart from obviously the rotary controls, but in terms of the line detection, no moving parts. Okay, um, if I turn this on, Okay, and if I angle this down a little bit, because you don't need to see my ugly mug much more. Okay, so um, you get the tap of the line, and then you also get the linear movement of the line. Okay, so that's what is the big difference between Delkim alarms and any other bite alarm on the market. Okay, hello, if you just joined us, we're going through vibration sensing today. Um, how to get the most out of it, um, and you know how, how to set it uh, correctly, and this is relevant to all your Delkim alarms. Okay, so you know, it's not just about the new ones; they all work the same. They've all worked on vibration since 1992, and though we have a response control now on our new uh, alarms, it's very similar to the sensitivity, so it will relate to both. Okay, I've got this set. Uh, beep speed 4 I'm not going to talk about beep speed I've left it same as a as a TXI would be or an old standard or whatever alarm you have it's going to be the same so that everything I'm doing here is going to be related to what you're um, going to see on your alarms okay we'll do maybe some questions at the end there if I if I see stuff coming people have got some questions. I'll try and keep my eye on that um, as we as we go along okay so one of the big things that people throw at Delkims and they, they say, oh, Delkims are too sensitive. Uh, makes no sense. How can something be too sensitive? That's saying my car is too fast or my stereo is too loud. Okay? You turn it down. You slow down. You turn the volume down on your stereo. You, you, you take your foot off the accelerator. Sensitivity or response, which is both, but we'll call it sensitivity and response. We'll move between the two. Same, similar things. Is it's there for when you need it. Okay, so it's it. You see me that it's that knock of the line. Okay, 
and that's where Adelkin comes into its own. So when set correctly, you can totally eliminate false bleeps. So you know if you do get something happen, or you do get a, a beep or two, then it's likely that something has happened at the business end. You've either had fish move in the swim and tap the lead. I've got the lead over here, so I can tap the lead. Okay. Or you've had a liner, or you've had something where, you know, something has happened fish related, and that's where we're at. You can iron out wind and, you know, really rough conditions, or you can really crank it up when, you know, you're allowed to, when it's flat, calm, and you can get away with it. Okay. Um, if you just join us, hi, we're going through sensitivity, so we're just uh, going through the basics at the moment, not going into any detail, um, but you know, we're going to go through how to get the most out of your alarms, okay? So, um, saying, so it's about setting it correctly, okay? If you're getting false bleeps or you're sitting next to somebody doing Delk and it's going beep, 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 beep all the time, then they're not using it right. Okay, just whacking it up to maximum is not the best way to get most out of the alarm. Okay, the reason I've got this set up here is we've probably all been next to somebody and it's doing this. Okay, that's blowing around in the wind. Okay, a bit extreme, but that's blowing around in the wind. Okay, so and you're going to get false beeps and that. I have got that cranked up to, to maximum on there. Okay. But I'm just giving you, you know, the idea of what I'm talking about. The key thing to start with is a stable setup. Okay, make sure things are not moving around because that's going to always cause, you know, compromises in your setup for for being able to get the most out of it. So you want it just to be vibrating when you get a run. So that's what these little fellas are for, and that's why we use them with our alarms. But other arms or you know hangers and bits and pieces they all have different ways of doing keeping them stable but make sure that you're using something that keeps your sta setup stable if it starts to blow the wind starts to blow and starts to move around then that's going to start doing different things you're going to start getting false beats gust of winds okay so what i'm going to do is i'm going to put this on the arm and i'm going to put that on mute okay just while i do that and then we will show you what's what what's a good way to to set yourself up. Okay, so I've got a I've got a night light V2 here, indication set, the new night light indication sets. But again, this is relative to everything you're doing, any uh, hanger bobbin setup, okay. I just happen to be using this and um, I think I'll take the weight off it for the moment just to give you an idea of how things are going to work. Okay, so we're going to set it up as if we would when we're fishing. Okay, so first rule, or rule number one, okay, don't up with false bleep. If you are getting false, oh, let's take it off mute. There we go, now we can hear it. So if you're, if you're getting continued beeps, then you need to turn that sensitivity vibration down. Okay, um, if you just join us, hello, quite a few people on here, so we're just going into the ins and outs of vibration sensing and, and gamma to get the best out of it. Okay, so when you when you start, it's always we want to start on the high side, so always set it slightly more sensitive than you need. So, especially if you're new to Delkim, we've had quite a few people come on Delkims with the launch of the TXID, but even people who've been using our products for a long time. They sometimes have them a bit too low and not quite get the most out of them. So always set it slightly higher than you need. And then if you're getting false beeps, you can just back it back it off. Till you get re eliminate those false indications. And you'll still find that even when you've turned it quite down quite low, which I'm going to turn that down here, if I move it quite slowly. I can move it with my hand, you can see it's moving quite slowly. So that's a bit of bobbing creep. But as soon as I get any activation from a fish, okay, that goes off. Probably set that a bit low for what I've got here. Okay, so 
again if I move that quite slowly a bit of bobbing creep as soon as I get an activation from a fish it goes off so again that's one of the great things about the Delkin system is that it overcome under the toe or you know when you've got a bow in the line it's straightening out slow movement you can just turn that sensitivity or response it's the same um, then you can iron out those false beats so if you've got a lot of undertow it will it will ignore them <clears throat> but as soon as it's flat calm then you can crank that sensitivity right up out you've got the slightest movement so if you're fishing by snags um, absolutely perfect you know really crank that sensitivity up make sure you've got your stable setup and then you'll net to know you'll get to know everything that's going on if it's a, a flat calm day you can really crank that sensitivity up and and start to know every little thing that's going on at the at the business end so the tap of the lead fish moved in the swim that happens okay you can be fishing 100 yards 150 yards out that does come through the line and that is from you know people know that from experience I'm not making that up we are, we've been doing this a long time um, since 1992 and you know some people have struck those I'm not you know people have told us that they've sometimes struck single beat fish on the end I'm not saying you're going to catch more fish by you know striking on that but what it does do is that if certainly in a snag situation is that suddenly you've had a knock what's that okay I know I've set everything right and so it must be fish something must be going on so you are poised and you're ready and therefore when it does go you're on it straight away and that's the that's the idea you're there ready so you've you it's not got a chance to to snag you in the in the roots or in the in the weed or wherever it is that you're fishing so it's that pre-indication of a bite that 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 helps you catch more fish and it happens and even with even when you've got the sensitivity down a bit lower you're still going to get those knocks that happens and that's why people use delkins you know people who um swear by roller buzzers and have never tried ours don't understand what they're missing and those that you know you're using it if you're watching me now you you're probably using if you use delkins and using for a while you understand you know you get a uh, knock knock on the end of the rod and that sets the alarm off you know because it can pick up things that a roller can't it doesn't have to move if you're fishing um in this kind of situation so you're fishing tight and again you've only got to pluck the line okay if you're fishing bow tight wherever you're fishing to then you're going to pick up that movement and that's going to give you pre-indication of a bite and it drops back if you're fishing with braid you know you can really get so much out of the the vibration sensor by in it and then you know how you know what what's going on and picking up all those little movements okay so if I'm going to talk about people who haven't got the new system I'm going to go back to people who have the the old TXI's and the old um, TXI pluses or standard pluses with the switch on the bottom that switch makes quite a big difference okay let me just grab a bit of water sorry I'm chatting away and hopefully this is some use to if you just join us hello we're going through sensitivity I'm trying to give you some tips and help and, and, and advice on getting the most out of it but um, the switch on the bottom okay on our, on our older ones so you had high and low plus and minus okay plus and minus okay and the rotary control had six not to six okay there's a kind of crossover on there where um, minus four to six would be very similar in terms of that kind of feel to um, plus in naught to two something like that okay but there is quite a, a difference between the plus and the minus the the plus in the plus setting it always takes a lot less 
to set the alarm off than it does in the minus. Okay, so it takes less effort to set the alarm off when you have it in the switch in the plus side than it does in the minus. And so, again, if you're getting false bleeps and you've got it in plus and you've got it at, you know, one, two, three even, then maybe switching it to the minus and then cranking it up to four, five, six might just eliminate those false bleeps without killing the sensitivity too much because it will still be very similar for that linear movement but it just won't quite respond quite as quickly to the tap of the line which if conditions have changed and it's got a bit windy or you're just getting those false bleeps then that will really help you okay um i'm just going to scroll down here see if anybody's asked me any questions so far um obviously we're talking about sensitivity at the moment guys if you have got any other questions um, I'll try and answer them maybe at the end or come back to people. Um, I'm going to try this certainly through the weekdays, half past six every day. I'm going to try and do something. Um, maybe you can ask me questions and I can come back to you. I know people have asked about IMU um, setting on the, on the new alarms. I've just done a video on that in the garden. Um, I'm probably going to get that edited and then get it over or get it out there over the weekend. Okay, so. Um, coming back to setting the, the, the sensitivity, okay? Weight makes a difference as well, okay? Adding weight to your hangers can also help to eliminate some false, false bleeps, okay? Because it will stabilize it naturally. So if I add back me, t me 10 grams, let's put that on mute so it doesn't. Uh, but if I add me 10 grams back on, it doesn't need to be 10 grams, I just hadn't had that one in the first place and putting it back on again. So adding weight can help stabilise the setup. Even if you're not using one of our hangers, a bit more weight, if things are moving around, obviously the wind can't blow something. So that, you know, ultimate goal is to be able to use the most sensitivity stroke response because I'm trying to cover both new and old alarms okay without getting false bleeps so it's about because that's the, the higher you can use that sensitivity the more you'll get out of it okay so in normal conditions this is I'm talking about normal conditions I haven't gone into when it's really bad yet and we'll come back to that so in normal conditions if it starts to get a little bit breezy I'm not talking gale force winds like we had uh, last month, how we moaned about them, didn't even know what was coming, did we? But hey ho, um, you know. So adding a bit of weight just stops things moving around and allows you to keep that sensitivity level up, so that you're still going to get the most and know more about what's going on. Obviously, if things start to get really heavy, really choppy, um, then you've got to start turning this control down. S control or the um, R control on this one. Okay, so that is that is the, that is the key at all times. Okay, um, Alan Smith, you asked about line clips yesterday, so our video is still on there. So if you want to go back, the whole thing about these little line clips. So I don't want to go through that again because I'm specifically talking about vibration. Okay, so have a have a look back on there. Okay. Um, so <clears throat> adding weight making sure you set that s control or the or the r control in that right position making sure you've got your switch if you've got the older ones either in the high or the low you know if it starts to get really windy or it's a bit choppy just pop it into the low position and turn the s control up that will just eliminate some false bleeps, but then when the conditions allow and it starts to get calmer, crank that up to the plus and turn that up. Okay? Then you can get more out of it. <clears throat> Another thing people um, talk about. Oh, I'll tell you what. Yeah, we'll, do, we'll go about. Um, okay, so ch choppy conditions. So when it's the other end of the spectrum, okay? Um, when things are really blowing a gale and um you know waves crashing in and you know it's really 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 heavy okay you can just turn this down 
okay so if I turn this down um, again this will be in the minus setting on the older older alarms and you probably use somewhere in around about two three maybe one two somewhere like that on the older ones uh, it depends you know you've got to set, you've got to you've got to set each one up how, how it feels um, and I'll, so I've got this one down let's just pull that through so you can see that's that's not beeping anywhere near as much so I've turned that response down I'm still getting movement if I it hard enough but I can move that now I'll do it with the lead because it's pulling it from that end let me see so I can move I can move that quite fast with nothing happening which to anybody who doesn't know anything about dangling say oh it's not working but as soon as I get any sharp movement from a fish which happens when you get a run it's it's fairly lively then it goes off and you can turn that down even more you know I can and, and people use that and have done in the continent um, you know when the barges go through on the canals it, it goes all the way to the top all the way to the bottom doesn't do anything but as soon as I get you know a run it sets it off so you know that's the extreme um, way of being able to use you know this versatile system that is is vibration um, one of the other things as well is you can't just set it the S control or the R control in exactly the same position for all your um, alarms and expect it to be exactly the same okay there is always going to be slight variation between alarm there's going to be slight variation in your line and there's going to be slight variation in component tolerances from alarm to alarm so it's a bit like tuning a guitar um, you've just got to tweak it, it's not going to be far out um, you just got to adjust it slightly from alarm to alarm to make sure the right for your, your setup okay so you just do that by just adjusting it and getting the feel that you want as I crank that up I'm turning that up so how sensitive do I want that to that initial pickup because that's what you're doing it's how it's responding to that initial pickup and if I turn that back up okay and then it goes into that I can turn it up a bit more going into the magic the magic warble okay um, one of the things as well a little bit of a helpful tip is that if you ever have a, a feeling that your sensor is damaged and it's not picking up as it should then I can show you how we test and have tested every single alarm that has ever left Delkim since we started making them. We test every single alarm that leaves us for functionality and to make sure it's sensitive okay so a little tip turn the alarm on turn it up to maximum on the on the vibration uh, on the response or turn it up to plus and uh, six on the on the control and just blow on it okay so when I blow on it I'm not blowing it with all my might so as you would blow into a instrument a flute thing like that I don't play the flute but it's a similar kind of thing to do and it should easily go into the warble if it doesn't go into the warble then that probably means that the sensor might be damaged and it's something that you might need to return to us to have a look at and sort out for you okay but you can do that anytime just to clarify that the sensor is working correctly and is um, you know to its maximum performance and that's how we test every single alarm that we've ever made we blow on them and check that they're working okay so that's a quick, quick little tip there And away. Oh, excuse me. Again, uh, let's just see if somebody, anybody's got any questions on that. People are asking questions. Okay, so hopefully these are helping you understand the best way. And one other thing we'll do is the magic old dropbacks. Okay. Dropbacks, you can't have your cake eat it. Okay set up and be fishing in the middle of the lake and 
have nice light bobbins on okay so you're all you know in this kind of style you're using super light bobbins okay you're fishing a bit higher like that okay and then okay it's not gonna and then it dropped back and then it will pick up okay but when you're fishing at 100 yards and there's a load of slack in the line if you have no weight on your hanger it's going to struggle to to pick that up okay that's always going to be the um what's the word i'm looking for offset that's not quite the word i'm looking for um the the compromise between fishing really light and if a fish comes towards you okay because it could be under your feet before it's dropped if you're fishing by snags okay or you're fishing in a situation where you're expecting more often than not a drop back or there's a higher percentage of having a drop back you've really got to add some weight on there so because it's got to be able to take up the slack okay and so if and especially if you're fishing in a big water perhaps far out and you want it to pick up and it's got choppy and you've turned the response down you've got to have some weight on there to pick that up so even if that's at the top there and I drop that slowly that picks up okay so you've got to have weight on there if you're going to try and get a, a, a drop back to pick up all the time if you've not got any weight for it to take up the stack. and again the more you crank up the sensitivity the more that's going to pick up I had that quite low I've got that about four five o'clock you can see it picked up the drop back not not too bad but that's got way more to go if I turn it right back up to maximum and pull that to the top and move it slowly okay so it's picking it's picking that up so drop backs are a difficult one anyway but I'm just you know that's just a little tip you've got to use weight on there so um, that's that's another good thing um, hopefully that's given you some food for thought hopefully that has identified some areas that maybe you can improve on again a sturdy setup fishing on if you don't want five speaks if you're on a, uh, a wooden platform and everything's moving around like you know I've got that cracked up to maximum and if you're stomping around then you know it's a vibration system There's, and if you're creating loads of vibration around it then you might set that off so you need to you know have a firm setup make sure things are good as best you can and then adjust your um, control accordingly you know do not put up with false beeps that's that's about as much as I can say because you don't need to and somebody hasn't mastered it and you know you you can hear them next door having false beeps maybe it's worth just giving them some advice in the nicest possible way maybe they might want to turn that down because just having it going into meltdown as soon as it goes off isn't the most effective way um, I could go into beep speed I have done something on beep speed before um, I think I did that the other day I forget what days I've done now beep speed that difference on the TXIDs okay I'm not wanting to you know I'm not trying to push an agenda here because I want to talk about setting them up. But go back, see the other videos. You'll see where beep speed can help get more out of the sensitivity, out of the response levels. But in terms of how it works across all alarms, that's about as good as I can explain. If you need any more information, contact me, um, and hopefully that is of some benefit to you. Um, I think that's about it. You know, uh, no, there's not many. Let me just scan through just in case somebody's um, asked something I need to know about. Uh, let me just see. Don't forget to download the app. I'm going to keep reminding you there's a competition there. Win £780 worth of stuff. Okay, set of blue TXIDs, a receiver. Should I turn that up so you can see me? I don't know why. Well, you might not want to see me, but anyway. Okay, so TXIDs, blue receiver, hangers, um, accessories in a black box heavyweights just download the app it's there it's going to help you in the future if you ever need a spare if you ever need to do your warranty if you ever need 
to return an item. If you need more information, it's going to grow the app as well. So there's more stuff in there. It's got bite-sized videos. It's got um, quick guides on how to use our products. It's got instructions on there as well. So everything is there. Somebody said today, instructions are really good. I'm dyslexic. It really helps me. I can't read instructions and user guides. So again, people work in different ways. User guides are there, stripped down to help people. The videos are there to help people as well. So let's just answer a few questions before I go. I'm getting, I need a, um, hopefully you enjoy these videos. I'll try my best. Uh, Roger Smith, you guys discontinuing of the LED units. I think you're talking about the power and indicator on the receiver. Okay, power and indicator switchable. Okay, so you can turn that off if you don't like it. All right. So if you want more information on that, contact me directly. Um, done the live tips. If you turn on the tips ID receiver. I get the turning on sound and after that anti theft. Is that normal? Is that something? No, anti theft. There it goes. Da -da -da -da. That's to show you. So that's uh, Rob Hollander's. When you turn it on, the anti theft is um, default. So the anti theft is always on and that, da -da -da -da, when you turn it on, that's telling you that that is set. Okay? You can turn the anti theft off if you don't want it to go off when you turn your arms off. Um, but every time the receiver back, back on, it will uh, enable it again because it's a memorized setting. Okay. Um, what else? Any more before I go? Nothing more. Okay, guys. So enjoy your weekend. Um, Stay safe, stay strong, and hopefully I'll be putting up the IMU video this weekend. And we're back 6.30 on Monday. If you need anything, let me know in terms of content. If you've got anything, we'll try and do a more structured um, face rather than just a, a random bunch of questions. So if you need to know about anything, let me know. I might see if I can get hold of some old product um, and, and, and do something on those and go through some things on the old stuff still because there's so many of you. Yeah, it's part of the Delkin family. I don't care whether you've got new ones, old ones. If you like vibration, then I'm happy. It doesn't matter if you've got a TX-52, a TXI Plus, or the new ones. You're all part of the Delkin family, and that's what we're, we're about. It doesn't matter. you know. And there's loads of people who have bought new, uh, new second-hand ones, shall we say. People have upgraded to the new TXIDs. So maybe some content about the old stuff might go a long way, and it's something you might look at next week. Stay safe, take care, and have yourselves a good weekend. Cheers.